Hi everyone! Today I'm going to show you how to create an animation in Clue. There are a few ways to create animations like this walking sequence, using software such as Blender, Marvelous Designer, or others. But today we'll focus on how to do it entirely in Clue 3D, perfect for beginners. So get your final design ready, and let's get started. First, head over to the Clue website and download a free walking animation. There are many avatar poses and animations available here. Download this walking motion for free. Make sure to extract the zip file once it's downloaded. Now, open your design in Clo. At the top of the screen, you'll find the rendering options. Select animation from the menu, then open the motion file you just downloaded. Make sure you're selecting the MTN file, not the zip file. You can double click the file when the open motion window pops up, then just press OK as it is. Next, set the animation quality to stable and adjust the frame rate. I recommend setting it between five and 10. The more complex your design, the higher you should set the number. Lower numbers will make the animation play faster which can cause issues like fabric collision during walking motion, especially if your design is complex. If your design is simple, you can set it between three and five, but for more stability. I usually go with a number between five and nine. I'll set it to nine for extra stability this time. Then click the camera icon to start the walking motion. This process takes some time, so I'll speed it up. You'll see a remaining time displayed at the top. It took about 15 minutes to fully render this motion. Below, you'll notice numbers ranging from zero to 188, point representing the total number of frames in this animation. Each frame is a separate image, so there are 188 images in total. To reduce the rendering time, I'll focus on a specific part of the walking motion. From frames 30 to 66, the avatar completes one step and I'll loop that part. Frame 30 is where the avatar's right leg moves forward, and frame 66 is where the next step begins. Click Render at the top, then select Refresh. Before starting the render, go to the Property Editor to adjust the lighting direction and choose your desired background color.
Now, click Stop Render to configure the video settings. In the Image and Video Properties, change the image setting to Animation. If you want to render the entire sequence, you can leave the setting as Entire Region. But since I'm focusing on a specific part of the animation, I'll set it to Play Region. Also, make sure to turn on Save Video and choose the folder where you want the final video to be saved. Once you're ready, click Start Render. As the render begins, you'll see the images updating automatically. Since I only rendered frames 30 to 66, it saved 36 images, but it still took around 30 minutes to complete. So if you set the save whole motions from start to end, it will take around two to three hours. Once the render is done, go to the folder where the images and video were saved. You'll find both the individual frames and the final video. When I open the video, I can see that the sequence is exactly as I set it. To check if the first and last frames loop smoothly, I'll set it to cycle and see if it connects well. It looks great. This is my final animation. You can check out my time-lapse video on how I made this jumpsuit in Clo. Check out the video description below for more info. New videos are coming soon, so stay tuned. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.